Well, hello, my loves. I'm Sean Petit, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I am doing a wet strength tissue paper review, and I am challenging it, and I am trying to find some comparisons to wet strength tissue paper. I know right now, as of this filming, no one can get wet strength tissue paper. I have searched everywhere, and all of the places that I went to, are out. They're sold out. For whatever reason, everyone wants wet strength tissue paper right now. I'm not sure why or how that happened. But so because of that, I decided to try and find other alternatives. And um, there were a couple that were close, but I'll show you the results and I'll show you what I'm talking about in this video. I have done a ton of testing and trying and all different kinds of techniques and different kinds of products. I mean, I was kind of desperately searching for things and I went on YouTube to see what I could find, like what else was anybody else using? And I just didn't find a whole lot that was comparable, but um, I'll show you what I'm talking about and what I was looking for and what I want from wet strength tissue paper or something that might be comparable. So my hope with, this will be a two part series or two part video because I'm going to do a lot with you showing you what I learned, what I tried, um, what I'm looking for, and then techniques, some really, really fun techniques that I found in the process. My studio is just, a uh, disaster. I shot a video of it in the height of the mess and it is just, you, you need a lot, it's like gel printing. This is like gel printing on steroids. So um, I had a lot of fun. I learned a lot of things and I found out, I found out some new things that I'm really excited about. So I'm going to do all of my testing and in the videos I will kind of prompt the, I'll come in to, and prompt the, what I'm going to be doing, and then I'll probably just create and do a voiceover or something like that to sh tell you what I'm doing, because there's a lot of information that I'm going to be sharing, and I need to be able to do that quickly, and I'm a talker, and I talk with my hands, and so I need to just create, and then I'll do a voiceover for you as I'm creating, letting you know what I'm doing, and then I'm hoping, hoping, um, as of this video to do a couple of projects with my wet strength tissue paper. One, I will, I'm will. i sure I will be doing something for Sunday Inspiration following these two uh, videos the next Sunday after you see these. And then I probably will do some type of bonus project. I have some really great ideas about a junk book with all of these papers and creating, because I've created some really fun things. Um, so, and I think I'll probably make that available in the um, membership, my the uh, Mixed Media Insider membership, but I am having a free preview starting September 1st, so you can get in and see that, see me put that book together, and I'll come back and, and hopefully show you something that I'm doing with the papers so that you have an idea of what's to come. There's, I have a million thoughts and I've worked really hard to try and organize everything. So we'll see how it goes. So um, let's dive in really quick. So out here I have all of the different types of papers that I have tried. Um, so let me just kind of go over what I've tried and then I'll, I'll explain this sample. So, of course I have my wet strength tissue paper. I have piles of things organized, hopefully. So this is just part of the wet strength tissue paper samples that I have tried. I've, I've done a little bit of everything. Pattern, um, creative marks, um, some really, and I'm going to show you all of the things that I did. Um, a, something that's similar to gel printing that I found really exciting. Uh, let's see, I have, we, I did, this is all wet strength tissue paper. I layered 
with string and and all different kinds of things. Some were great, some were not. Okay, this is wet strength tissue paper. I've got some, look at how pretty that is, some mica powder in there. This is wet strength tissue paper. I did some really cool kind of patterning with crinkling the paper. Um, so this is all my wet strength tissue paper and I'll go through each one of these techniques with you over the, the neck, over the videos, the next, um, today and tomorrow. Okay, so that's my wet strength tissue paper. I also tried, so when I realized that I couldn't get the wet strength tissue paper because I thought, you know what, I'm just going to buy a whole bunch and sell it to you guys if I can get it. I was going to try and get it wholesale. That was not a, that didn't happen. So then I thought, well, I'll just buy it retail and sell it to you for my, for what it cost me, you know, plus shipping. Um, and by the time I got to the sites that I went to, I went to Etsy. I went to a couple different places that I had gotten them before. No. So, and this comes out of the UK. So, um, it's not easily accessible. And so like I bought some from Etsy and that was coming from the UK. So it takes three weeks to get to you. Um, if you're lucky. So anyway, so I thought, okay, well, I went on, um, YouTube and looked at some options. The first option that I came across was, this is, um, Toddy cold brew um, paper filter bags for your coffee maker. They come in, these are bags and they're big sheets like this, which is really nice. Um, and you, I just cut them into sheets like this. And the, it's really, it's a really great product, but, and you'll see what, what my, my comparisons were. See, this is what I'm talking about. There were a lot of things that I tried and I was looking for specific things, but I also tried just regular coffee filters because I thought, well, if this works, why wouldn't this work? Well, it's completely different. A regular coffee filter didn't respond at all like the toddy coffee filters did. Um, so let me set that up there. I'm trying to, I want to be as thorough as possible, but at, go as fast as possible because, see like regular coffee filters, um, because I don't, I know this is going to take some time. So the regular coffee filters, um, while I got some fairly good results, they weren't, the blending, how it worked was very different than the tissue paper, the wet strength tissue paper. Um, because this is like a fabric, you can, you can hear the difference. So this is the coffee filter. This is the tissue paper. It's a very different feel. It feels like a fabric almost. Um, so it soaks up whatever you're putting on it. And so you don't get the, the effects that you typically would with the with the tissue paper um, I still got a few really cool looks but there it's really blended um, and so you can you can hear it it tears fairly easily but the nice thing about this was it was really strong it stood the test as far as strength as the wet strength tissue paper. So this is definitely an option. It's not as clear, uh, it doesn't go as transparent, and it's thicker and it has that, it, it has a feel of fabric. So it's not as smooth as you put it down. Um, so there's, in all of the things that I tried, there were benefits and, and, and not, and trade-offs so to be able to find something that might work as well so this was okay I will tell you that the wet strength tissue paper comes in big sheets like this oh I cut these up but it comes in a big sheet like this so uh, you have a lot of options as far as size goes okay the next thing was so then I went searching again and I did this one next. Let's see. Oh, you know what? This is coffee filter too. No, not that one. See, it's so hard. This is coffee filter too. And I did it with the mica powder. 
but again I can't get any like real good segments of color because it just sucks in the, the stuff and yeah okay so moving on to okay now this this was an adventure this is fusible web, not fusible web. This is interfacing. Um, like you use to, when you're sewing, you use an interfacing to make your fabric stiffer um, and more strong. So I thought, well, I will try some things with this. And I did a couple of these. And of course, I can't find them to save my life right now. And who would know where it is in this mess? But this will give you an idea. So while this, it's again, like a fabric, you can hear no sound. Um, and again, it's hard to get any distinct color because it all kind of blends and sucks in. Um, however, it has this really, like, can you see the, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. I guess that's as close as I can go. It has this really good kind of, um, crackly look which would so if you wanted to use this for just a specific look I was like hmm that could be really interesting and it would be textural too so I I I have all these things and I probably at some point will use them um, so this was fusible web now it's not strong it didn't it uh, go the paces. I got it wet and I could tear it. I You can't heat it like I heat gun and dry it. You can't do that because it melts. Um, but if you just let it dry like this, you get some really cool effects. Even if you wanted to just do with nothing on it, it would be kind of cool. So that is interfacing. Um, so let me put this back over here. So after that didn't work, I thought, okay, so I went searching again. <laughs> and I came to this. <clears throat> this is a um, hundred sheets in, in there. I got three of these. This is the biggest I could find of this. Um, I did look again and I think Etsy had a couple of places that had bigger sheets, but um, it, it's not worth it to me because of how I tested it. Uh, this is, it's like, um, it's, it has a fabric feel and it's all, it's like a heavy duty tissue. Um, and I did get, let me bring out just a white piece of paper here. You know, I, I was able to get a couple of different kind of, like it didn't blend out quite as much as the um, coffee filter. So I was able to get some good pattern, but all you've got are these little sheets, which is kind of annoying. However, it was very, very transparent when you put it down, very transparent. Like of all of the things that I did, this one was the most transparent, but it tore in the process of me putting it down. It's because it's so thin, it's not strong. So that was that test. And I'll show you some more results of that. I did try regular tissue paper um, and I tried to put it to the test. This is just my regular tissue paper and it just fell apart. Same with rice paper, it fell apart because I'm doing, I'm covering and soaking these, these pages with color and ink and all different kinds of things. I want that, I wanna be able to create some really amazing texture or pattern to use in my art. And so regular tissue paper didn't hold up like that, didn't hold up at all really. And um, yeah, so, so then the next thing was, I did the fusible web lens paper. Oh, okay, so then Wonder Under, did I say fusible web? I, not fusible web, but, but um, okay, so deli paper, wet strength tissue paper, coffee filter, toddy, coffee filter, coffee filter, regular, regular tissue paper, um, 
interfacing, and then Fusible Web. Now, Fusible Web is, this is just a, a brand I got off of Amazon, but Wonder Under is a Fusible Web, and you use it to do, like, applique. So this is, like, uh, this is, yeah. I'm trying to see if this is off. So it comes on a sheet, and you iron it onto fabric, and then you can iron it onto another piece of fabric. So it's... And it comes like this on this sheet. And it looks very similar to the um, interfacing. Uh, it's a little bit lighter, and but it's really, really delicate. You can't heat it because it melts. And um, I was really disappointed. Really, really disappointed with this one because I heard great things. And, you know, I tried it a lot of different ways. But again, it has that texture, and I'm trying to decide where, what did I do with my samples here? Okay, sorry about that. So this is the fusible web, but it you can tell right away just by how it works. Um, it just, I wasn't real happy with it. And it was, as soon as I put it down and did the test it tore um, and because of its lightweightness and it starts to dry it kind of picks up off of the backing paper and the backing being on the backing paper gives you some of your design so again and it also blended out so it was hard to get some good color I really worked hard on getting good color for this one um, but again, no pattern or anything. And it's got this particular brand has this little line striation, which I guess could be good. Um, but I just wasn't very pleased with that. So then, let's see, the last one. Oh, th yeah, the last one was actually a great option. Okay, so this one is tea bag paper. Now, I was actually very pleased with this. So this is kind of a cross between the coffee filter and um, the wet strength tissue paper. So it's uh, got a little bit more texture and it's really strong. I put it through the paces. I c you can't tear it like you would like you would the others. Or it's just like the wet strength tissue paper. It's really hard to tear. But you can hear how that sounds in comparison to, let's just grab some. This is the wet strength tissue paper. It's a, a, it's really a mixture. If it, it's a, it's like a combination of the toddy coffee filter and wet strength tissue paper. I can get some wrinkling, which is really some of our techniques. Um, and then I covered it, just covered it with paint to see if I could lift it because I, with the wet strength tissue paper, I treated it like a piece of paper. I was lifting it, folding it, hanging it, moving it around, drying it while it was still wet. I was lifting up on the, the corners to see if it would tear when it was all wet. And, um, this one and the wet strength tissue paper Really honestly, this one, the wet strength tissue paper and the toddy coffee filter were the strongest. Um, and then I like the look of the wet strength tissue paper the best. This is second as far as look and then the coffee filter is third. Um, this is, let me just, so <clears throat> this is the um, wet strength tissue paper. So I was able to get some variation. Um, not as much as I wanted, but um, so I had it on, you know, parchment paper, and I had it here laying like that. And if if it were the tissue paper, I would have more defined lines because you can see you can see the pattern back here. And because of whatever the material is, it dries and kind of lifts and that kind of thing. But, it's an option, which I'm happy about. So, um, 
and I got some good movement and that kind of thing. It still did kind of soak in a bit more than the, the tissue paper, but still not as, as much. And then I, this is completely, this is a technique that I can't wait to show you. This is completely covered with paint. And then I pulled back the paint. I mean, I carved out, I did all kinds of things on it, and it was really, really strong. Um, this is also um, the, the tea bag paper. I've got so many papers, tea bag paper. Um, I did some palette knife work on here. I did some stenciling. Um, and I like reverse stenciling. I pulled the paint out. I mean, I was tough on it and it really stood up. So this is an option and it's, it's thinner than the toddy coffee filter. That's what I like. It's not as thin as my wet strength tissue paper, but it's pretty close. So I'll show you so this is my wet strength tissue paper, and I did the same kind of technique on this. You can hear the sound versus, it's, a, it's close, and the feel feels very similar. So this, the tea bag paper is a great option for a lot of the, pro, the um, techniques and experimenting that I'm going to do. If, I don't know when the wet strength tissue paper is going to come back in. I did check and the tea bag paper is available on, on Amazon. I got mine from um, Jane Monteith. Hers came out and then shortly after hers came out, a whole bunch of other people were selling it because I looked for it um, just regularly and I couldn't find it. And then as soon as she you know, had hers out, I ordered from her. She's on Amazon um, and she's a small small business, small artist um, selling. So, and th then there are other companies. I think they're also small businesses. I don't know, but the tea bag paper is an excellent option. Then of course, let's talk about, and it, from, from Jane, I ordered, this comes in a sheet like this and it just ro ooh, rolls out um, to, I don't remember the inches, but you could get a couple of different sizes. So that's the tea bag paper and a really, really great option. Now, I just want to clarify that wet strength tissue paper is different than regular tissue paper because a couple of people said, oh yeah, I've got tissue paper. This is not the same. It doesn't even compare in strength. So um, you won't be able to do a lot of the things that I'm doing um, with regular tissue paper. You can get close. You can get close, but um, it's, it's just not strong. I mean, I hung my papers dripping with medium and ink and everything up like on a laundry line. Um, and I tried to do that with my regular tissue paper and it just, it tore. So, um, you can try the things that I'm doing with tissue paper and I'd rather have you try with doing it that way than and see what you can get because you never know because so many things that I did that I thought weren't going to work I, I found some really great new ideas that yeah so wet strength tissue paper is different than regular tissue paper when you search for wet strength tissue paper a lot of other products come up but if it doesn't say wet strength tissue paper and there's only one company that I know that they may I think they manufacture it and sell it I'm not sure but it's carnival papers and they're out of the UK um, there was one other company that was selling it big big Amart, um, but they are out and they actually took my order and they didn't have it and they had to refund me. So yeah, and, and Carnival Papers, the Wet Strengths Tissue Paper was sold on Amazon. Um, I could not find it today as I, right before I filmed. So I don't know what, <laughs> when, um, so, okay, now, so I went through and I tested the strength. I was testing the strength of everything. Then I went back and I tested the transparency because that's the other part of this equation. 
um, is I want it to I want everything to be as transparent as possible. And that's part of the reason why I did some stuff like this, like I pulled back so that I could get some some transparency through my um, paper. So uh, let's let me pull this out. Okay. So this is the wet strength tissue paper with um, satin varnish, no, matte varnish. So when I started, I started with matte medium because that's what I use. And it wasn't as transparent. You can see it's fairly transparent, but not, not very. Um, and I was like, wait a second. So then I, I went on YouTube, that's what we do. And everyone was using gloss medium. Well, gloss medium to, leaves your papers feeling really plasticky. And if I'm putting this down onto a surface, I don't want gloss. So that means I would have to put this down, get it transparent, then put matte medium over it, which would kind of cloud it again. So, and if I wanted to create a very transparent paper like this one, I don't want it looking plasticky. So the gloss medium was a no for me, a hard no. Um, so then I went searching through my stuff and I had a satin varnish. This is the satin varnish, you can see. It's not as glossy as this one. Um, and it gave me a fairly transparent feel for this. But I'm like, oh, I just want my matte. Then I thought, wait a second, I have some matte varnish. So I put matte varnish down. Uh -huh. So it's fairly transparent. I mean, really, honestly, so let me... I'm just going to grab a piece of paper here. Look at that. So this, I've got some subtle, um, some subtle, pull this out here, pattern on here through a stencil. See that? But it's very transparent. So I was like, okay, now this is good. So I, instead of putting it down with matte medium, I could put it down with matte varnish and I still have that wonderful matte feel, has a wonderful feeling about it. And I will get as much transparency as possible. This is the wet strength tissue paper. Uh, so let's see, I just wanna see. This is the, this is the toddy coffee filter. No. Yeah, it is. I can tell by, you can just tell by the, the, the texture of it. So this is the Toddy coffee filter. Fair, same as, same feeling. Okay. This, let's see, this was my matte medium. So it's still <clears throat> fairly transparent, but this is the coffee filter. Okay. So I did a lot of testing on what would be transparent and what would not. So here is my kind of side by side. So, okay. Where do I start? I'll start here. This is the, the toddy coffee filter. And unfortunately, I had done this with, with before I figured out the matte varnish. So this is just with matte medium. So um, this is the toddy coffee filter. It went fairly transparent in comparison to, this is deli paper. Um, this is the interfacing. And you can see this really cool texture, what I'm talking about. This right here is the lens paper. It's, it virtually disappears. And this is an extreme example. I typically would not put any type of paper like this over a black surface just because there's just no way to get it completely transparent. Um, but look at that. It's a shame that I only get a little piece and it's so, so fragile. I mean, it tore as I was putting it down. So that's that one. Oh, this is the um, tea bag paper.
This is the Wonder Under or the fusible web. It went very transparent, except it's got that kind of striation. But again, this is so flimsy. It just, I wasn't happy. This is the Wet Strike tissue paper, which I'm surprised at how, how, how much it shows in comparison. So here's the, here's the um, tea bag paper. This is my Wet Strike tissue paper. This is regular tissue paper. And then this is the co the regular coffee filter. This is this is the other this is the toddy coffee filter. So I've got a lot of variations here <laughs> of things. So like every one had a thing. So like this one, great. It's very transparent, but it won't hold up, and it's little tiny pieces. This is um, fusible web. It's it feels like sandpaper a bit, you know, and it's got that webbing kind of feel. This is the deli paper. It, while it's good, um, and it can be compared to, say, wet strength tissue paper, it has a resist to it. Um, and then the coffee filter has, again, it's thicker, like there's a ledge here. There's not that with the others. There's a definite ledge here, and it's just got that kind of fabric feeling. The tea bag paper does not have that. That's why I'm thinking that the tea bag paper is going to be a great option. It's thinner and it's smoother. And my puppies are barking away, but we're going to keep going. Um, and then my wet strength tissue paper, again, it's nice and smooth. It stood the test. Um, my regular tissue paper tore as I put it down because as I put each of these down, I did the test. Like I wanted to be able to smooth it out like this and be really, I was rough with everything and it tore. Um, this one did not, the, the um, tea bag paper did not tear. So yeah, I am really pleased with this experiment. So right now my favorites are my wet strength tissue paper, my tea bag paper, and then the toddy coffee filter, which is a surprise to me, uh, although it has um, some thickness to it, I think it would be a great option for specific projects and some really cool texture or things like that. And really, honestly, all of them would be um, just in different ways. So, but how I want to use them, I want to be able to, to create some pattern on my papers and use them in my background for um, my, you know, pieces of art, abstract, florals, different things. I want to be able to include them on flowers and create pattern and design. And so I really want them to be strong. I want them to hold up. I want to be able to create some really great techniques on them. And so those three are my best options. And so I'm going to be focusing on those three for my experiments um, for the next video. Um, so let's see here. So I will be doing several techniques. A lot of them will be um, some um, un-gel plate gel printing. That I, I found a really unique way to do some um, printing without a gel plate. Um, stenciling, I'm going to be doing some palette knife work. I'm going to be doing some, um, where's my stack of papers? We'll be doing some really neat kind of twisty type of things to get some cool pattern, um, like that. It's almost like a tie-dye look. Look at that, so fun. And then, we'll be creating some like custom papers. I thought because of the lightweightness of the wet strength tissue paper, this would be really great for like some custom paper look. Um, and these were done with matte medium. So if I do them with the matte varnish now, they'll even be more transparent if you want it. I really kind of like this because I thought if I cut out some of the squares, how cool would that be? Um, this was done with, um, I just took, a regular thread and just did a couple, you know, few strands and did it that way. This one was done with just a single strand of thread. This one is raffia. This one is um, embroidery thread. So um, then
These are some cool prints and different things. This is a really cool technique. I can't wait to show you that. Um, these are all like gel prints that with, but I did not use a gel plate. Oh, um, we'll be using soft pastel to create some pattern. Here is my list here. I wrote all this out so I wouldn't forget. Uh, let's see here. I did some um, Stabilo All Pencil. Just regular stenciling. This is actually with um, Walnut Ink. This is a non-gel gel print. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it. Um, Lots of fun things. Um, oh, this one was really great too. What was it? Look at that. I used a... Um, see that fun pattern? I used a doily. And let's see what else did I have out here. I used markers. Um, Needlepoint, um, canvas, stencils, all that kind of stuff. I used mica powder. So let me set this back down here. Okay, so I did a lot. And, um, oh, oh, love that. And I have some really great ways to seal this now and use them. So I'll be showing you that. Um, this is kind of, um, so I, this is a really fun technique that, um, I learned from Kat Rains, who does, she's an amazing collage artist, and she did something called paste paper. Well, I did not use, um, wallpaper paste. I just used matte gel and added my paint to matte gel, and then you can kind of carve out into it. Um, so this whole sheet of, um, wet strength tissue paper is covered with thick paint. And I came back with um, Q-tips and pulled some of this back. I used my stencils to do some reverse stenciling. Look how pretty that is. So this will be transparent, fairly transparent, once I get it down with some satin varnish. You see that? Um, so I'm excited to kind of show you the things that I did and then put them down onto back onto backgrounds that will show you um, how it goes down. I mean, this is just, it, it's just like a whole page of paint. And with this, it, it's not paste paper, it's gel or paste, yeah, paste paper, I guess. Gel paper um, is gel medium in paint. And it just gives me just an amazing, amazing feel and look for this. And then I did some um, palette knife work too because <clears throat> um, I wanted to be able to have some kind of palette knife work and still have some transparency. So we'll put some of that down. And then I used um, soft pastels in a lot of different ways. And this is kind of scraping off onto it. And while it's still pretty, you can still pick up some of the soft pastel, I'm going to show you a great way to seal it and create, you know, encase it in, without really disturbing it. Okay, so that is, that. that's all I'm going to do for today's video. I wanted to show you my comparisons, show you what I've done, show you the products that I have tried and what are my top three. I will leave links down below this video to um, direct you to, well, you won't be able to get wet strength tissue paper, but I'll, I'll direct you to where I got it so that maybe you can keep an eye on it. And then I'll direct you to the other two top favorites of mine, the toddy coffee filter and the tea bag paper. Um, and then tomorrow we will you'll see me kind of put my ideas into action and show you some of my things. And that video will be more of a, a voiceover kind of thing so that I can just kind of show you the techniques, get through all of that, and then we'll see how, how much time that takes. 
I mean, this may be a two or three part series, I don't know. Um, and then I'll come back and take what we've created together and put them down onto surfaces so you can see how it works and how you can get some really great um, effects with some of that transparency. And I'll show you, you know, how I use the, the matte varnish um, and that kind of thing. So that's all for today. And I am going to clean this up and start filming the next section.